All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ryan Wells. I'm with Blue Line Optics, and this uh, th this video we're going to go over the mill dot reticle. Okay, so we get when when you're new to learning uh, about long range shooting and rifle scopes, it, the mill dot reticle is something that comes up a lot, and it can get a little confusing. I mean, it took me a little while to understand that. I mean. The, the mill dot reticle is sort of the same as like these these complex hash mark reticles that are in mill two one's just built off the other etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so I wanted to make a nice little video here that just went really in depth about mill dot reticle and you know it, it'll get into like a little bit of the history uh, of of reticles plus the evolution to the really complex like Christmas tree reticles that we see today so a prerequisite for this, I would recommend, I mean, obviously you can watch it wherever you are, it doesn't really matter, uh, but I would also recommend having a knowledge of what MIL and MOA is, because that's we're going to be using those terms in this, uh, in, in this little presentation here, and I don't really have time to go into too much detail about what the difference is between MIL and MOA. Uh, just know that they're angular measurements and they they help you measure the distance to targets and it's what your reticle is going to be measured in in this case the mill dot reticle so a couple of questions end up coming up <laughs> at least for me when i was starting off too and this is total like like showing you how clueless i was when i started when i started learning how to shoot is uh it, it is obviously number one is what is the dot for you know, and a mill dot. Like, what, what what is this dot? Why does that even exist? It, just, it seems kind of weird, especially when you look at the hash mark reticles. It just seems like hash marks tend to do the job better. Uh, what exactly is the dot? Now, uh, the second is, why does that one have hash marks and that one have dots? Okay, so what exactly is the difference between the two? Why do, the, why, why do these two exist differently? And then my favorite is, okay, so that's a mill dot reticle, but those adjustments are in MOA. So your turret adjustments are in MOA. Like what, what's the deal with that? Uh, that one was especially confusing for me. I didn't really understand why that happened, but then it just, you know, obviously I learned, I learned it because I'm teaching about it now, but, uh, and, and I don't recommend this for, you know, especially new shooters, the adjustments in MOA, but a mill dot reticle or a mill subtension reticle. I mean, if you're if you're experienced, obviously do whatever you're comfortable with. You know, you're probably, you probably you you don't need me to tell you uh, what you're doing. But I mean, if you're just starting out, I I would not suggest getting a scope that that has adjustments in MOA and like a mill reticle or an MOA scope and adjustments in mill whatever it is. Usually it doesn't go that way. Usually it's a mill reticle adjustments in MOA. Uh, and we'll go into why that is here in a couple of slides. But it, if you're new, I don't recommend doing that. I just keep them the same. It's just going to be a lot easier for you. Um, but and before we get into any of these, let's take a let's let's see how far reticles have come since the first reticle. So like the first reticle looked something like this. Obviously not this. This is simply just a circle with a crosshair inside of it. Okay, but the first reticle was literally just like pieces of hair that formed a cross in the center, hence the crosshair, you know, really creative. Uh, and, and all they were really used for was to just give the shooter a point of aim, right? So the, the whole term aim small, miss small, that's, uh, that, I mean, that, that describes rifle shooting very very well you know you, you want to be aiming at the smallest point possible well if you have this big open area of glass it's a lot harder to aim small right because you don't really have a point of reference to aim small your eye moves like thousands of times uh, a minute uh, that might be a bit of an over exaggeration but it definitely moves a lot of times per minute so to keep it focused on one tiny little thing you need something like a crosshair to really help you focus in and hone in on that thing uh, so that's what the original reticle was and that's what it was used for you know it was an innovation on just this that this blank uh, piece of glass that you were pointing at something or, or more, more than likely someone back then uh, to to have the bullet make connection now let's talk about the first question you know what what is the dot 
uh, the dot is simply just a way to use mill on the reticle to make that reticle kind of work for you uh, and be more useful for you. So if you're familiar with mill and MOA, which I hope you are, uh, and if you're not, just try to keep up the, it, we use mill and MOA to measure the distance to target. So if we know that our target is like one yard tall, uh, and we measure that the distance or that, that the target fits right exactly between these two dots, then we know that we have a ratio of 0.8 mil to one yard. And so from there, we can tell, oh, that's how far the, that, that's how far away the target is. So we need to adjust our scope up by this much because our bullet will drop by this much over that amount of time. Okay. So this, this, transitions from that just classic crosshair look which is what we were what we were doing before which had just made the remember just made the reticle a point of reference for you to something that's actually working for you and something that's going to really help you hit that target um and right here is it this is an example of the vortex mill dot reticle it uh it it is the this is on the viper yeah, it's on the Viper. I had to think there had a little bit of a brain fart, but that this is on the Viper. And what you need to know about the mill dot reticle is that any point on, like, say, this point right here, this black point, is exactly one mil away from that same exact point on the next one down. And that's true for all of these. Okay. Uh, and then when you get to the center here, the center of that, like, picture there's a dot there. The center of this is one mil from the center of that okay uh, and then on this particular scope and this is pretty standard doesn't always happen that way but this is pretty standard that on a mil dot scope the distance between the two uh, the, between the two dots will be 0.8 mil if you're going from the bottom of one to the top of the other and the diameter of the uh, of the mil dot is 0.2 mil from the mil dot reticle we want to take a look at the more complex mill reticles. Okay, so the complex mill reticles are just going to be a build off of the original uh, mill dot reticle. And what these do is they make it just even easier for us to do these distance calculations. Okay, distances on the more complex mill reticles are measured between hash marks instead of dots. And this is going to let you have a much finer calculation. Uh, the typically these reticles are going to come in these subtensions, right? And you can see them here. So like A2, C1, A1, V1, B2, these are all what are called subtensions. And if you reference them down here, they give you what the distance of that subtension is. So for example, B2, okay, down here, the B2 subtension distance is 0.4 mil. And that's really easy, really handy, uh, and it stays constant on that scope in particular. Now, these will change depending on the reticle you have, so you have to study your reticle manual, obviously. But still, a really handy tool to have. They also make holdovers uh, possible to do, and we're going to get into holdovers a little bit later on. But just uh, understand that holdovers are basically a way for you to not have to adjust the turrets of the rifle scope in order to make your windage and distance adjustments. So let's take a look at uh, just a couple of different mill dot examples. This is the first one, uh, the Athlon Neos BDC-22 Rimfire reticle. And this is a mill dot reticle, but it's primarily being used as a BDC reticle. So BDC stands for Bullet Drop Compensator. And I mean, that just simply uh, compensates for the drop of the bullet over a distance. So <clears throat> as per the Athlon marketing material on the Neos, this is really useful for quick adjustments for hunters. And they'll zero it at about, or not at about, they'll zero it at 50 yards. And they'll use these adjustments to uh, adjust for 75, 100, 125, 150 yards. So it's nothing too complicated. It's not going out to like a thousand yards or anything like that. These are for more short range shots. Uh, but still, you want to be able to have like that, the ability to make like that quick adjustment in order to hit your target 100 yards away or so. And then the next one is the Leupold Mark VI M5B2 mil dot. So this is, it's just a standard mil dot scope. Uh, it has the subtensions that we were talking about from earlier. Uh, the, the dot is, the dots are 0.2 mil in diameter from the top of one dot to the bottom of the other is 0.8 mil. 
from one point on one dot to the same exact point on the other dot is one mil exactly, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then I just added in some, some of loopholes like marketing notes and stuff like that here is that mil uh, tends to be the military standard, which is why we use mil on mil dot instead of MOA, in case you're wondering why isn't it MOA dot. Uh, and then originally mil dot reticles were built for the Marines to measure distances. So that's actually where the innovation came from, which is pretty common in the United States. You see the military taking over or you, you see the military adopting a certain way of doing things. And then uh, the general population will be uh, pretty close behind it. Uh, the last of the basic mil dot examples is going to be the, the vortex mil dot. Uh, which actually belongs on the Viper. So this one's really interesting because it is a mil dot scope and the subtensions are standard mil dot subtensions. However, the turrets adjust an MOA. So that's weird, right? You would expect for a for turrets to adjust in the same angular measurements that your uh, uh, that that your reticle is in, but that's not the case. Not in not in this rifle scope. Uh, situation anyway um, and this is because some people find it easier to make adjustments in MOA so one MOA is 1.047 inches uh, per 100 yards and most people just take that 0 0.047 off and round to an inch so they can make these adjustments pretty quick right so four clicks is one MOA and that's just really easy to do if you know if you know your distance and if it's easier to measure your distance to to target with the mill scope, then I guess if you can convert between these two units in your head, you know, you're, you're not really going to have much of a problem. Now, if you're new, I don't really recommend doing this, uh, but, you know, to each their own, what, what, whatever, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you decide is a lot is easier for you to use. And from there, let's take a look at some more complicated reticles. Uh, so this one's the Leupold Mark V HD TMR, which stands for Tactical Mill Reticle. And as you can see, it's actually just a build off of the, the basic mill dot. There really isn't anything too complicated about this one, except that it has hash marks. And that allows for, as we mentioned earlier, much finer calculations. Okay, so the distance between the two hash marks on this particular scope is 0.5 mil. And, you know, you're not having to mess around with, like, figuring out where you're at on the dot, okay? So, it, it, it's just a hash mark. You know, you go from one hash mark to the other. It's, a, it's, an, it, it's an equal distance. You don't have to try to mess around with the dot or anything like that. Uh, so, this just makes it much easier to make those calculations, and it makes it much easier for holdovers. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that these 0.5 mil subtensions... That's going to vary depending on whatever reticle you get. So it's really important for you to read the reticle manual before you take this out to the shooting range. And don't think that there is some standard distance between these hash marks like on the mil dot. The mil dot, typically they're, uh, they're, they're, one, mil, they're one mil apart. But with the hash ones, it just depends on whoever manufactured it and how they manufactured it. Uh, last but most certainly not least on the complex reticles uh, and the reticle overview in general is the Athlon Midas TAC APRS3. So this actually builds off more of the TMR, okay? Not directly off the TMR. Uh, they, they, uh, I, I don't think they designed this based off just the TMR, but you know, the TMR's base concepts. So we have the hash marks again that are in constant subtensions away from each other here, but also notice that we've added in numbers which is great because now it's just a really easy reference to see, you know, how many mil am I apart? Uh, this one is two, this one is four, this one is six, et cetera, et cetera. So that, 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 that's just really handy for you to be looking through your scope and to just not have to take up any more of your, of your brain power than is necessary. It's just written there for you. The next part that is really fascinating about these types of reticles uh, is this little Christmas tree that you see made down here. So this is what we call a Christmas tree reticle. And these straight lines all have their own subtensions, right? So like this one's two mil below, four mil below, six mil below, but it's, they're also a certain amount of mil to the left and to the right. So this is to the right and left, one mil, one mil, one mil, then two mil, two mil, and then three mil, and then down to two mil again. Um, and these make it possible for you to do these extended holdovers 
without having to actually adjust your turret. So you can figure out what your adjustment needs to be and then adjust your scope to go onto one of these dots and then take the shot. Then you don't gotta adjust your turret and you just don't gotta mess with it. There are less opportunities for you to screw up and you tend to make better shots when you're not taking as many steps. So that is pretty much what, now there, there are reticles that get more complicated than this, uh, but I mean, for, for just a basic overview, this is a really good example of a complicated Christmas tree reticle and how it's used. So to sum things up, mill dot, they're just scopes that help you measure distances. They can be either dots or hash marks. Technically, a mill dot scope is the actual dot one, and then a, a, a hash mark scope will have its own special name. Okay, it won't just be called mill dot. It'll be called like, like the APRS3 or whatever. Um, these more complicated designs can almost make adjusting your turrets unnecessary. So if you have a Christmas tree reticle, you, you don't even really need to adjust your turret. You can literally just move your scope up to where you see the target at and make that adjustment as you need to make it. Now, a lot of people here are wondering at this point, you know, what, what, what do I get? You know, like, what is, is there a best one? Like, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just going to tell you now that it is entirely up to your own personal preference. Okay. There is no, there, there is no reticle that is better than any other reticle. They all kind of just exist, uh, at, at it for different reasons. Okay, so if you're like a hunter, you might not want the more complicated reticle. You might want just a basic mill dot reticle. If you are a, uh, if you're going to be shooting long distances, then you might want that more complicated reticle. You know, it's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to what you're using it for. Uh, just, just get really clear about that before you actually go out and purchase one. And that sums it up, everybody. So if you want to see more, head on over to bluelineoptics.com. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you liked in the comments below. Uh, leave me any questions there too, and I will get back to you. Thank you very much.